All right, so all clocks are built around the three same main components. And that's including all clocks, from your grandma's old clock to the watch you just bought from Walmart. They all build the same, and it's no different for a Minecraft redstone clock. Now let's go over these three main components. First, you have what I like to call the clock's heart. And that's the part that knows how long a second is. So if we look at your old grandma's clock, you can see there's something swinging in there, okay? That's called a pendulum. And that pendulum can be calibrated so that each and every single second, it goes back and forth. So, if we put a switch at one of the ends of the pendulum, we get a pulse each and every single second. And for the second part, well, we need something that's gonna count those pulses from the clock's heart. And if we use your grandma's clock example, well, at each and every single second, it moves just a little bit the second's hand at each and every single pulse. It's adjusted so that 60 pulses make a whole turn of it. And then there are gears behind the clock with their ratio adjusted so that the second's hand can also control the minutes and the hour's hand. Isn't that amazing? And finally, you have to display this. And with your grandma's clock, it's pretty straightforward because it's just a round disc with some indications, some numbers, and you have all the hands that show, that points to those numbers. But that's also where the possibilities come endless in digital clocks, because you can have seven segment displays, or matrix, or even Nixie tubes, which are kinda cool. And for us, for our redstone clock, we're all gonna use the simplest method, it's a seven segment display. Okay, so let's finally start building our clock. So, for the heart of the clock, we're gonna use repeaters. Why? Because repeaters, what they allow us to do is that they allow us to create a delay with the output. So if I put one here and configure it in max delay, as you can see, if I input single, it takes time to reach the output. Which is exactly what we want, because if we put two of them in a loop, well, what we have is a looping signal, just like that. Which is exactly what we need for our clock's heart. Now, how do we make sure that our pulsing is exactly one second, so that our clock is accurate? Well, it's very straightforward. We just have to do a little bit of calculations with Minecraft timings. And Minecraft timings are incredibly straightforward, because one Minecraft tick is one tenth of a second. So you need 10 Minecraft ticks in order to make a second. And what is a Minecraft tick? Well, it's the delay that a repeater in the first position induces. And repeaters are incredibly straightforward because a repeater in the second position induces two ticks of delay, in third position, three ticks, and in fourth position, four ticks. And how do you make a 10 tick delay? Well, it's just by plugging them in, in series. Because when you plug them in series, well, their delays add up. So if, for example, we put two four tick repeaters and one two tick, well, we're gonna have 10 ticks total. Okay, so let me show you. So we're gonna put our two four tick repeaters and one two tick right here. And we're gonna hook it up like this. And if we power it on, as you can see, we have a pulse each in every single second. And there you go, just like that is step one, our clock's hard completed. And now, let's move on to step two, the counter. And for that part, we're gonna be using repeaters as well, but this time a hidden feature of repeaters. Let me show you. So, if we put one here, and one powering it from the side right here, as you can see, the repeater now turns into bedrock, and that means it's locked. And what being locked means? That means it's locked to its state that it was previously on. So if it was powered, it's gonna stay powered. If it wasn't powered, it's gonna stay not powered, no matter what I do with the input. So as you can see, now that it's locked, even if I put power in it from the input, the output does not change. 
Unless I unlock it now, it starts functioning normally again. So you can see it kind of like a memory. You know, if I power it here, as you can see, if I lock it and I remove the input power, it stays powered until I unlocked it. And that is incredibly useful for us because what we can do is we can plug them into a chain and leave them powered just long enough so that the power jumps to the next repeater each and every single time we do it. So then we have ourselves a counter. Let me show you. So let's build our chain. So I'm gonna put a couple of them in series right here. I'm gonna put the repeaters to their side. I'm gonna plug all of these repeaters together and finally power it with a redstone torch to make sure that all the repeaters right here are powered. And then I'm gonna put all the repeaters here in second tick position. Why? I'm gonna explain later. Now, how do we get just the right pulse to make sure that we unlocked the repeaters for just the right amount of time for only one repeater to jump? and not two or three, and to also ensure that that repeater jumps. Well, that's pretty straightforward, let me show you. So for that, we're only gonna need a sticky piston and an observer, okay? So how we're gonna do this is that the observer is built to detect movement. So as soon as you power the piston, it moves and it sends a very short pulse of one tick of length. So as you can see here, we get only that very short pulse. And while it does move again, after when the piston powers itself off, well, it's not connected to the rest anymore then. So we only get one pulse from when it pushes it. So if we plug this to our series here with a three tick repeater, and why three tick? Well, that's because redstone torches are not fast enough to be able to switch off and back on for just one tick. Why? I have no idea. But all I know is that we have to extend that one tick pulse to two ticks. And the easiest way to do this is to use a repeater in two or third position. Why? Well, it's because those repeaters not only delay the pulse, but they also convert it to a single tick pulse to a two tick pulse. So it's as straightforward as this. So as you can see, if we power our repeater chain here and I go and press that button, as you can see, here we go. We have one repeater powered. And if I press the button again, then we got two repeaters again, three repeaters. So each and every single time that I press that button, we have one more repeater to go. So yes, that is our counter. But it only has one problem, and the problem is that it only works once. Because once the signal reaches the end, right here, well, it doesn't do anything anymore. And the fix to that is very easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by resetting our chains. So we're gonna empower it and unlock the repeaters by removing the torch right here until the signal gets off. And we're gonna place back the torch to relock them. I'm gonna repower it at the entry here. I'm gonna press the button once to only let the first repeater turn on. Okay, and after that, well, I'm gonna hook the output of the chain to the input to create a loop. And now, as you can see, when I press the button, it moves once, it jumps, here you go, and as you can see, after that, it goes back to the first one. So it can count endlessly, and that's perfect for our clock. Because as you already know, clocks don't just count endlessly, they reset to zero each and every single day. So for example, a 24 hour clock, when it reaches close to midnight, so 2359, one more minute and it falls back down to zero, 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 zero. Okay, now for AM PM clocks, it's the same thing. When they reach as close to 12 o'clock, well, 11.59, well, they fall back to 1, 0, 0, 0 instead. So 12 hour clocks reset two times a day. And for you, dear Americans, well, we're gonna be using the 12 hour format. Please, no hate comments. <laughs> 
And for that, we're gonna need four separate counters. The first one having 10 positions for the single seconds, so counts from 0 to 9. The second one for the tens of seconds, 0 to 5, so 6 positions. And then it's the same thing for minutes, so one that has 10 positions from 0 to 9, and one from 0 to 5 for the tens of minutes. And then you go into the hours where it gets a little bit more complicated because you need one that's 11 positions for the single hours because we need two ones, one for one o'clock and one for 11 o'clock. And then you need, lastly, a two position counter from zero to one for the tens of, of hours. And these counters are chained in series. So each and every single time a counter reaches zero well, it sends a pulse to the next one, so the next one goes up by one. The only exception being the single hours, which not only send a pulse when they get to zero, but also send a pulse when they get to their second one. So here's our completed circuit in Minecraft, and as you can see, there's all the counters I mentioned before. So, in theory, if we connect it to our clock's heart we made earlier. Well, we have ourselves a clock and it is now counting. Just like that. And here we go. Now we have 10 seconds. Now you might have noticed that the tens of hours counter is different from the rest. And you would be indeed be correct. And that's simply because, well, a two position counter is simply a flip flop just like the tip of your pen. And that's also because our locking repeater chain simply does not work for two position counters. As you can see, if I initiate it like this, as you can see, if I press on it, it works initially, but as soon as I try to reset it, as you can see, this one stays powered simply because the power loops around and it just comes back to it while it's unpowered. And the solution to this is as simple as finding another mechanism of flip-flop that I'm going to show you right here. So as you can see, this is the mechanism. And what happens is that as you can see, our redstone block here powers that repeater. And as soon as we push those blocks, well, the power will go back to that piston, pushing the redstone block in the other direction. And it's the same thing for here. As you can see, if we power it, Boom, we get this and we can get an output by just putting a repeater here, just like this. And as you can see, each and every single time I press a button, it turns off and then turns it on. Just like a flip flop, exactly what we need. And then you're going to ask for the third part, what about the display? Well, because we're using redstone and the repeaters, we can see when they're lit up or not. Well, I can just put an overlay of numbers over just besides the repeaters and you're going to be able to read the time just fine. But it's not the most practical or not the coolest way, right? So, as promised, we're going to be building a 7 segment display for this clock. But this is for a future video, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out and hit the bell icon. And if you enjoyed the video, well, please leave a like. It's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recommend the video to more people just like you. So, as always, thanks for watching and have a great one.